Aloha, everyone. Thanks for joining us today on Adventures in Small Business. My name is Jane Sawyer. I'm the District Director for the U.S. Small Business Administration. And this program where we talk about small business in Hawaii, what's happening, what's trending, what we're doing that works, and maybe how we overcame some of those things that didn't work is presented in partnership with our SBA-funded resource partners, the Hawaii Small Business Development Center Network, the Mink Center for Business and Leadership, and the Veterans Business Outreach Center of the Pacific, along with, of course, ThinkTech. So thanks for joining us. We have an interesting program today that's going to talk about the launch of one of our favorite programs here in Hawaii, our High Step program. High Step is a program that helps you learn how to export, uh, learn how to get into new markets, and then actually helps you with assistance, funding, and special programs to get there. So today we're joined by uh, Jamie Lum from the State Department of Business, Economic Development, and Tourism, our funding partner and the administrator and promoter for High Step. So welcome to the program, Jamie. Thanks for being here. Thank you for having we me. We gave Jane. you kind of short notice, but <laughs> I appreciate it because that hopefully we can push out this program and get a good response because you're starting in November with a big launch. But why should people be interested in exporting in the first place? Right. Well, thank you, Jane, so much. So the Hawaii State Trade Expansion uh, Program is funded by the SBA, and uh, yes. this is the seventh year that we've received a grant, so thank mm -hmm. you very much. Mm -hmm. um, and why is exporting important? Because it helps our small businesses. Hawaii is a very small market, mm -hmm. so it's, it's um, only logical in terms of growth that they need to get outside of Hawaii. Mm -hmm. um, some will start with the U.S. mainland, but we are really looking to push businesses to look globally right. because we know that 95% of our consumers are outside of the U.S. Mm -hmm. So that's really what we're trying to do and to um, get them uh, out there to um, reach, right. reach out and to really get the word out about our unique Hawaii products and mm -hmm. services. And that's a, that's a really, really good point because Hawaii, Hawaii small businesses do have some great advantages. And it certainly helps us all when our businesses decide to sell more products outside the state and even outside the U.S. mainland because it brings new dollars into our economy. Right, exactly. They also have a big advantage because we do have some access to markets uh, in Asia that are, you know, consumers there are growing at a terrific rate. And the other thing is they love Hawaii products. They love everything about Hawaii. There's some special cachet. Right. Have you experienced that when you help small businesses go out and look for other locations? Exactly. So uh, a lot of businesses find that uh, when they're selling their products here in Hawaii, uh, that with the visitors that come, that they may attract certain types of visitors. Certainly the Japanese are very, uh, very interested in Hawaii products. Mm -hmm. And it, lots of times it starts with them purchasing uh, gifts for their family and friends when mm -hmm. they take it back. Take and then, home. Right, right, uh -huh. right. So it's a good test for our Hawaii products to see, uh, you know, how well their, their products do with these different markets. So, mm -hmm. um, it, you know, it starts here and then they can, um, through our program, test out the market, um, you know, to see if it's viable for mm -hmm. them. Because so. that's been one of your very, very successful trade show programs. Um, is that right? It's the ones you take to Japan? Right, right, right. So, it's been our, our the Tokyo gift show, which we just completed in September, is mm -hmm. our largest show that we do uh, with, uh, uh -huh. you know. So can you give us some idea of the scale of that um, gift show and how many Hawaii businesses went with you? Right, so there are over, it's a three-day show. Actually, they expanded it to four days. Oh, now. my goodness. And over 250,000 uh, buyers. Now, it's not a consumer show, so we're just talking about people that are looking for products to, to um, put in their stores right, or to right. resell. Right, and um, so uh, 200, over 250,000 people go through the doors. Um, we had... Uh, this year, I believe we had 58 companies that 58 went. 58 so, small businesses. Yes, yes. Okay. So, um, and, you know, ranging from, you know, our, our coffee and chocolates to people that make uh, koa, uh, you specialty know, products. Items. Right, mm -hmm. a lot of specialty items. Um, skincare products, you mm -hmm. know, that are made with Hawaii ingredients. Um, and smell wonderful and bring all that right, Hawaii right into right, your... Exactly home in Tokyo. Right. <laughs> so we get a lot of, we get a lot of traffic 
Um, not to mention that we do set up a portion where they can actually purchase. Um, there's there's a ancillary area where they can mm -hmm. purchase some Hawaii food. So that also brings people kind of into mm -hmm. the area. So we've even had some Hawaii um, uh, entertainment in the past to kind of draw people mm -hmm. into our area. Yeah. Well, but, anybody that I've talked to that has gone has found it to be a wonderful experience and very engaging, not just in that they get to sell some more products, but that they experience other buyers, their interests, what they're looking for for other customers. They see what attracts them and what's selling because then they go out into the city and the country as well right. to see what the, the people and the consumers uh, are using there um, because some of it has become so big. Do you have any kind of from the small businesses out of those 58 businesses that went with you, mm -hmm. what kind of results did they have? I mean, do you measure or find out if they had a beneficial or a productive or a uh, zing zing big orders or right, anything? Right, uh, we do actually. So at, at the end of every uh, event, promotional event, trade show that we do, uh, we do ask our companies to mm -hmm. report to us. Um, that is actually something that we're required to report to mm -hmm. SBA so that they can mm -hmm. make sure that the funding we're getting is, is working and that right. we're getting a return on investment. Mm -hmm. So we do ask companies to um, report what actual sales they got, so um, any orders that were placed at the show, mm -hmm. and then we ask them to project out 18 months from that event as to uh, what they, they think their sales might be as a result of mm -hmm. that show. So we've had companies that have participated for many years now, mm -hmm. um, and um, some of them have, have and, and for people that have done business in Asia, um, it does take some time to establish yourself. So, mm -hmm. um, you know, they'll say, instant. right, uh -huh. right, right. And so if you're a, a business that's going to the show for the first time, um, you know, you can't be disappointed if, mm -hmm. if you get nothing because um, uh, Asian buyers, Japanese in particular, they want to, um, First of all, they want to see you be there uh, uh -huh. over time, so they want to know that you're, you know, you're. You're going to be a reliable right, supplier, right, exactly. Yeah. Um, and they want to get to know you and get to know the product. So um, they say usually um, those people that have done business in Japan say it takes at least three years to really sort of get a foot in there and start mm -hmm. getting some orders. But uh, we've had companies report. Um, uh, I had one company that told me that in the last five years since she's been participating that she's uh, increased her sales 300 percent oh exporting. my goodness 300 yeah. percent so so you know it's a small company mm -hmm. they uh, they're you know growing slowly but um, well, yeah you don't want to go too fast right. and have it all collapse on you so <laughs> that will create other problems i'm sure right? you're counseling them on smart growth as well right, right. <laughs> through our partners yes yes uh -huh. yeah and we can talk about some of our partners too and what we've done okay. so yeah, yeah. I know um, some people might be really surprised that they've had such remarkable results, but even from our headquarters and our Office of International Trade, the Hawaii program, High Step, is known for getting a good return on investment, mm -hmm. and that is one of the strongest measurements. So that's, I think, the duration and the success of the program that you've put together. You've gotten proven results for the invested dollars, but also for the businesses that come and participate. So if somebody who's listening to this program or has been thinking about how they might want to grow their business, how do they get involved? We're starting the launch coming up the first week in November, right. but what kind of companies are you looking for and, and what should they expect? So the program is really made for companies that ranging from those that are just thinking about exporting mm -hmm. to even those that have been exporting but are maybe looking to expand into other markets. Mm -hmm. So we have uh, three components of the program. Okay. Uh, we have our export readiness program, which entails uh, training sessions that we've put together, working with our partners at the Hawaii Pacific Export Council. Mm -hmm. um, and so we have these training um, sessions. We have them uh, once a month normally on various mm -hmm. topics. Um, marketing, doing so trade shows, throughout less, the year. yes, mm -hmm. um, and then that's really meant to create sort of a, a foundation, particularly for those that uh, those companies that don't know anything about um, mm -hmm. exporting. In fact, we start with a program called Export University 101, which is mm. uh, a, a overview of really everything that you need to to know A to Z. It's, it's a very um, uh, quick and dirty uh -huh. sort of uh, I go look back at to school. Right, right. <laughs> and then we kind of get into those topics a little bit more with uh, 
uh, each session. Mm -hmm. So we have the export ready readiness um, besides the training sessions. We also partner with the SBDC, the Small Business Development Center, mm -hmm. with the Mink Center, uh, and with the uh, Hawaii Pacific Export Council to provide mm -hmm. uh, business advising for our company. So it's mm -hmm. like they get a business consultant for free. Mm -hmm. For those companies that may be more new to business, we'd probably have them work with the Mink Center, which is mm -hmm. they've, they've uh, agreed that they will work with some of the newer companies just mm -hmm. on um, solidifying the business itself. Mm -hmm. And then um, SBDC can look at other issues in terms of exporting, and then the Export Council can look at real specific, because of their, their background, mm -hmm. real specific export mm -hmm. problems that uh, an experienced exporter might yeah. already have. So, And I think it's a, it's a good thing to point out, too, that there are resources available on each one of the islands. So it's not just uh, Honolulu-centric or Oahu-centric, but the Hawaii Small Business Development Centers have certified export consultants. Um, they're available on all the different islands, and so it's a big advantage to kind of learn about this program and begin to participate, start building this strong foundation to make that launch into a different country, a different market, um, very, very successful. Right. So um, early business, get ready for exporting, export university. Mm -hmm. um, and then um, with, with all of that information, um, hopefully, we'll, that will uh, give companies the tools that they need to either put together an export plan if they don't have one, mm -hmm. or maybe tweak an export plan that they already have. And then we look at programs um, that we provide that they might be able to participate in. And so mm -hmm. that would be our, our Hawaii pavilions at various uh, okay. trade shows in which uh, the cost for participating is subsidized. Okay. and making it a, a less expensive. Okay, I think we really want to hear a little bit more about the trade shows and how to get involved and, and what you offer. We're going to have a really quick break here in a minute. But just to, you know, let people know, this launch is starting very, very soon. So yes. they should be looking looking up, I think, our first programs are starting. What's the schedule? Okay, um, for... so uh, November 4th, we'll be on Maui in Kihei. Uh, we'll do our high step kickoff on the 5th. We are doing uh, Hilo in the morning and Kona in the afternoon. And then on the 6th, we'll be on Kauai. Mm -hmm. uh, in each of those places, we're partnering with the Small Business Development Center to put that together. Okay. And then on Oahu, we're having our launch on November 19th at mm -hmm. the Foreign Trade Zone. Okay. So that will give an overview of the program. We'll have our uh, partners there. Uh, to talk about their their roles and their organizations. And so they'll get all the details on this. Um, where could somebody go just before we go to break? Right. Do we give them a website to yes. tell them where Our to go? Yes, our website is invest.hawaii.gov. And it. if you go under the exporting tab, you'll find out everything that you need to know. Invest.hawaii.gov export. Okay, we'll be right back with you for more with Jamie Lum from DBED and High Step. Thank you. Stay with us. Thanks to our Think Tech underwriters and grantors. The Atherton Family Foundation, Carol Munley and the Friends of ThinkTech, the Center for Microbial Oceanography Research and Education, Collateral Analytics, the Cook Foundation, Dwayne Carisu, the Hawaii Community Foundation, the Hawaii Council of Associations of Apartment Owners, Hawaii Energy, the Hawaii Energy Policy Forum, Hawaiian Electric Company, Integrated Security Technologies, Galen Ho of BAE Systems, Kamehameha Schools, MW Group, the Scheidler Family Foundation, the Sydney Stern Memorial Trust, Volo Foundation, Yuriko J. Sugimura. Thanks so much to you all. Thanks for staying with us. We're talking about exporting in Hawaii and what it does for small businesses. Um, I love this time of year because it is the beginning of our new fiscal year. We get to start everything over and we get to launch programs all over again. So we're really happy that we are bringing up um, High Step for one more year at least. Hopefully this program will continue because it's shown such great results for small businesses in Hawaii. Another reason it's my favorite time of the year is that it's time to nominate small businesses for their accomplishments 
for the SBA Annual Small Business Awards. Now, this is a great process, and I'm looking actively for exporter awards. <laughs> so small business exporters, those people who sell products and services outside the state of Hawaii, they've shown innovativeness of products and services, finding new ways to get their products to different markets. They've opened up new markets. Maybe they've been involved in the High Step program or worked with some of our SBA resource partners. SBA also has ways to help with funding for exporting um, programs. So they can learn more about it if they go with your program too, right? Yes, correct. But SBA awards nominations, you can find them online. Go to sba.gov. They're due November 4th. So just before we do the kickoff for 2020 uh, High Step program. So we were talking earlier about how to get involved, pre-exporting, early export, new market export. But what does somebody have to do to get some of the benefits and get ready to go with you on a trade show? You've got a whole variety of programs. Right. Okay. So actually, uh, I should mention we have a, a registration mm -hmm. form on okay. our on our uh, website, which is again invest.hawaii.gov under the mm -hmm. exporting tab. And really what we want is we're looking for information on the company mm -hmm. so we can um, see, you know, what their export experience is. Mm -hmm. And that, that kind of gets the ball rolling in okay. terms of once they submit that, and then we can pair them up with uh, one of our resource partners. So it's to kind, kind of right-sizing, getting them to the right connections right. to start. Exactly. So you want to um, pre-screen a little bit, right. see if they're ready, or um, Yes. Help them see avoid what, the if frustration they, if they have that particular you might, issues. Yeah. And then we also uh, want to see what they are interested in. Mm -hmm. You know, we are they interested in uh, coming to any of our training sessions? Are they interested in a trade show? Are they interested in company assistance? So we ask those those types of questions. So, mm -hmm. so that would be the first step is to make sure that uh, they fill that out, make sure that they qualify. Companies do have to meet SBA's uh, size standards, mm -hmm. which most companies in Hawaii do. Right. Um, and then they also have to be uh, have to have uh, their product or their service has to be fifty one percent U.S. content. Okay, fifty one percent U.S. Right. content. Yes. Can you give us some examples of products that obviously would be eligible or ones that you have been had to bump? Right. Um, so you know some of our uh, some of our Hawaii uh, products um, are not manufactured. In Hawaii, so it, it mm -hmm. depends. There is a formula. Okay. So it, it really depends on um, how much of the value is added here mm -hmm. in, in Hawaii, or if they if they produce it on you know on the in, on the mainland. Mm -hmm. Of course, that would. But if they're producing it uh, out of the country, then it would we'd have to look at what the components are and what the you mm -hmm. know. So there is a formula that they use to figure that out. So, okay. Yeah. You, know, um, you know, some of our apparel companies, for instance, they might be uh, designed here, but not not manufactured here, okay. so it, it would just depend on how much they're spending like on their the, product The here. materials come from somewhere else, right. Um, right. you know, carvings come from somewhere else and then are assembled here in a different manner. Right. What, what number of components that went into that piece right. and where was the work right. done? So it's, it's based on the, on the cost of what mm -hmm. they're bringing in and, the, and then what their cost is for the labor and whatever other um, But you have people who can here. help figure that out oh. or it's... Right, right. Yeah, if they uh, have questions, they could always, they okay. can always ask us. So, yeah. So that, so there are some, you know, just some requirements, steps, yeah. making sure that they that they uh, qualify for the program. But mm -hmm. we really haven't had too many companies that we we couldn't help. So that mm -hmm. you know, that's that's good. So great. Um, so you know, they attend our uh, training sessions and get. And the other thing I wanted to mention is, although um, the training sessions are held on Oahu, although this year we're going to have one on, we're going to do the Export University on Maui because we have a lot of companies on Maui very interested. Mm -hmm. But we do, uh, uh, people can join via webinar. So even if this island, people that are in North Shore or whatever, yeah. they can't mm -hmm. come into town. So we do webinars and we also uh, video tape them and put it in a video library on our website. So okay. People can view them later. There's so, lots of ways so, to become involved with right, this. Right, right, right. So that's so that you, yeah. There's mm -hmm. uh, there are a lot of different ways you can get the information we're trying to get out there. Mm -hmm. um, to uh, for for those companies that are interested in trade shows, uh, mm -hmm. we we put out announcements uh, several months before the trade shows to start recruiting, and then they you know they would sign up. Again, mm -hmm. we're doing everything online in terms of our our um, people registering and so mm -hmm. forth. And and how that works is we will buy a number of booths in a show mm -hmm. and we will pay for the cost 
for putting up that Hawaii pavilion, and we 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 um, we format it such that people know that it's Hawaii. You know, uh -huh. our, we decorate it with you know Hawaii images and the a big Hawaii sign, so that and then you they have all know. that Hawaiian food that smells wonderful, <laughs> and everybody's like, "Where is well, that?" At the, at the Tokyo show, yes, <laughs> we don't do that at all of the shows. But then people know that these companies are from Hawaii, mm -hmm. and then we do assess a participation fee, but it's usually around about a third of what the company would spend mm -hmm. if they went into the trade show directly. So because, there are financial benefits right. for a small business, both with the right. marketing impact as well as an, an advantage in a reduced cost. Yes, and we've also found that companies also learn from each other at these shows and have, you know, maybe partnered together on certain things. So, um, it, you know, there are a lot of other benefits too besides just, you know, uh -huh. them finding buyers and, mm -hmm. and whatnot. So that's... Yeah, that's uh, another component of uh, our... And I think right now you may have two programs that you're promoting. I think we put two messages, or Sandra posted a couple of messages in our new, recent newsletter. Right. So do you want to mention those? Right. So we are, uh, we are actually, I think there might, anyway, we are recruiting mm -hmm. for uh, the Surf Expo, which is in January. All right. And, um, and then a, a show called Fabix, which this is the first year we're doing it. Mm -hmm. uh, Department of Agriculture has done it in the past, mm -hmm. um, and uh, we're picking that up this year. And it's a Where's food show in Tokyo. Okay. Um, it's uh, geared towards more restaurant, you know, oh, uh, to supply restaurants, uh -huh. um, ingredients, and so forth. So um, that's another show. We do have another um, tied to a, a program we have with the Hong Kyu Department Store. Um, mm -hmm. They have buyers that are coming in. Um, on October 29th. So that one is coming up immediately where some of them are coming here and companies are going to be able to actually show them products. So the Hankyu event is something that happens in July. Mm -hmm. uh, it's a week-long uh, consumer show at, uh, at the Hankyu department store in Osaka. And mm -hmm. again, during the week, they have over 200 thousand consumers that come through and they highlight Hawaii products. Mm -hmm. So it's a good way for companies to um, that maybe are not um, exporting on a regular basis to Japan, um, they, m they can kind of do market testing, okay. see how consumers respond to their product, um, and see if there's anything they need to tweak. A lot of our companies find they need to uh, repackage into smaller quantities and so forth oh, for, uh, for a, a market such as Japan or other Asian mm -hmm. mar markets. So, mm -hmm. you know, that's the kind of things that they learned. And then, um, and then they can go into trade shows where they would have direct contact with buyers mm -hmm. and distributors. It makes so. me kind of chuckle because I, I look back to a story a couple of years ago that came out of DBED. One of your success stories, a small business, a couple of young guys had started making chips oh, okay. at, in, the, in their kitchen, like hungry after surfing and making, making taro chips in the kitchen and mixing up some hot sauce. And uh, Jimmy Chan, you know, right. a Hawaiian chip company, yes. does Salsa, hot sauce, and chips. Mm -hmm. um, they become very, very popular, and he's really done very, very well. He was a SBA exporter of the year a couple years ago, but the story came out. He had the opposite problem from downsizing to smaller packaging because he was selling hundreds of thousands of gallons of hot sauce. Right, right. And I, I know Dennis and I, Dennis Ling and I, were laughing about the volume. Do you right. remember? Well, because uh, Jimmy hit the restaurant. Um, that that's where the restaurants wanted to buy from him. That's why mm -hmm. the gallon. So his small bottled sauces were later sort of an afterthought to go directly to consumers. But uh -huh. the restaurants were buying his sauce to put into their their food. So yeah, and 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 his story is interesting also because chips were his first product, uh -huh. but he found that it was difficult for something like that uh, because of the shelf life. Mm -hmm. So that's why he's been, uh, as far as the, the Japan market, turning more to the sauces, which uh -huh. have a longer so shelf life and so forth. And I so. think that single sale was like 600,000 gallons right, of right. Kilauea yes, fire yes. going to Japan, yes. you know. Yes. I didn't know if they were bathing in it or wrestling <laughs> right. or what, but uh, that was a heck of a lot of sauce. <laughs> You know, but that's what that's the outcome of this program right. for some of the small businesses. Right. And again, it's going and try, you know, trying it, and then well, that didn't quite work. And but we learned this, we learned that. We need to you know adjust here, adjust mm -hmm. there, and they've made that adjustment nicely and yeah. been able to you know uh, profit well. So from being hungry after surfing right. one day, it's grown <laughs> right. to this big successful 
uh, Hawaii company. So exactly. um, it's, a, it's a wonderful story, and we continue to watch and work with him. Uh, and he works with a lot to help a lot of other people, yes. like with the Hawaii Food Manufacturers Association and encouraging other people to learn as he has. So right. Yeah, that's, that's great. another great thing about the program is that a lot of the companies are so willing to share with other companies their uh -huh. experiences and and especially, you know, if, if it's something that, um, you know, that maybe a misstep here or there and they really want other companies to learn from their, mm -hmm. you know, their mistakes and, right. you know, things to avoid. So um, we do a session uh, with uh, the Innovate Hawaii program, mm. which, you know, helps manufacturers. And they bring in a panel of, of companies to talk about all of their, um, you know, they, what they've gone through and the, the growing pains of their company. Jimmy has been one of them, Hawaiian uh -huh. Chip Company, but Manoa Chocolate also has, you know, been there and talked about how they started making chocolate in their UH dorm room. And <laughs> I think it's hungry guys. Right, I think right. a lot of these start with hungry yeah, guys, I think you know. So. <laughs> but they're they're a really very very interesting business as, as well, and have just expanded to a lovely store uh, in um, in Kailua. Right. But right. their story uh, from Dylan starting up, Dylan and Tamara Butterbaugh at Manoa Chocolate. They've even started to look at how they become the suppliers and grow Hawaiian cacao mm -hmm. to produce their wonderful chocolate. Right. internationally recognized for its quality so they're exporting to Europe and to Japan and right you ha know or work with them I, on other markets um, I think they've been looking at Australia also and Canada but they are one of the companies that have expanded we have so many companies again because of our ties with Japan mm -hmm. and so forth many of uh, I would say 90% of the companies that that's their target market but um, Manoa chocolate is one of those that has I diversified into other other yeah. markets. So there are so many places a, a small business can go. And because we're just getting ready to wrap up, we want to remind everybody to go online and take a look at these programs. Also, you know, let your mind kind of wander and, and look at some of the markets that are available. We do look at the South Pacific. We do look at Australia, New Zealand. There's South America. Um, some of the naturals, of course, are the brick. Uh, they still call them that, you know, the, the grow, fast growing economies mm -hmm. and fast growing consumer economies that will be looking for products and services of all types. But this is a great way to start with the High Step program. It's hosted here in Hawaii, developed a great program, gets your results, return on investment. So it's good for Hawaii, it's good for your business. So thank you so much for joining us today, Jamie. And again, we're going to be starting this program at Neighbor Island. Um, you want to repeat those dates right. again? So starting on Maui on November 4th, and then Big Island on November 5th, doing uh, Hilo in the morning, Kona in the afternoon, and then on the 6th, Kauai, mm -hmm. and then on Oahu, November 19th. And it, that will be at the Foreign Trade Zone in the morning, right right starting at 9 a.m. Yes. Yeah. yes. Okay. So thank you so much for joining us. Please do check out the High Step program. Think about what you can do to expand your business and your opportunities by exporting outside the United States. Lots of customers, lots of way to help. And nominate your friendly business for an SBA Small Business Award. Um, you can find that information at www.sba.gov backslash Hawaii, or HI, excuse me, backslash hi. So, Thanks for joining us today for another Adventures in Small Business. We'll see you next time. Aloha.